Hello and welcome to Path of Unique's. Today we're unboxing a Warhammer Underworld's Harrowdy box. This is the Black Powder Buccaneers. And even though I haven't really got any of the Harrowdy stuff so far, I just really like this model. So that was the reason for me getting it. I really like the idea of like a pirate ogre. <laughs> I know there is actually a pirate ogre, but this one just says like Blackbeard to me. So I liked it. <laughs> so we'll have a look at everything that's in the box, because it has been a while since I've actually have a look at any of the Warhammer Underworld stuff. Uh, so I was going to take the seals off that. Okay, so I actually failed on opening the box yeah. because I so didn't have the knife, so I thought I'd steal it. Terrible. Can I get the staff? <laughs> I consider myself pretty redundant. And, you know. Oh, you um, see that's what I was worried about doing. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so we have uh, one sprue. Two sprue, and we have the cards, which we'll have a look at um, at the end. No, no, we'll do it now. I'll look at the cards now. Oh, I'm trusted to open them. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, that was a yeah. posh way of opening it. It was, well done. So, uh, these are the cards that should be in there. I like the fact they've actually put hey, these in there. Yeah. yeah. It's the last one we did anyway, it's new. Um, so, what about the shadow on this? It's uh, no better. I was trying to fiddle it with the lights. Um, right, okay, so we've got Black Pirate and Spide Side. And the. There's the Uninspired Side. We have. Who's this? KG. KG. Inspired. And. The other side. We have Mange. Eggs. Shriek. And then we have the uh, ploys being the done that. Flurry of Claws. Gold Rush. Grand Theft. Hasty Shot. Makes of Munitions. And we have some like punitive damage. Reckless Raid. Snack Break. Mm. Cash Compass. Legendary Looter. Liberated Map. More Powder. More Shot. Pointy Bits. Scavenge Shot. Thieving Grapple, Tiny Braggot, Truck Off Grease, Aspiring Tyrant, Bold Tails, Brash Braggot, Broadside, Oops, <laughs> Brutal Belaying, Eyes on the Prize. Gold diggers loaded with booty, man eater, 
smash and grab, tall tale, and treasure hungry. Those are those cards. Okay. So we have some additional cards as well. So we'll go through these. I tried to move the camera again. So we have a flitting shadow, grievous gear. Holes of the Hidden Eyes, Illusionary Maze, Shadow Bomb, Spiraling Confusion, Unlikely Hero, Land Grab, Victory's Reward, Plunder the Graves, Playful Shake, Adept Smoke, Bound Bolt, Darkening Stone, Encrusted Key, Keen Sense, Shadow Keeper, Staff of Ciphers, Shared Glory, Gifted Speed, Vital Spear, Wrecker's Scorn, Find a Path. Going in for the kill, indifferent end, last stand, let the shadows lie, make a path, ordered reality, generous blessings, path of death, and path of destruction. Okay. Um, so most of the parts for the main guy are on this sprue. Uh, and then there's some under the sprue as well, weirdly. So uh, we'll start by cutting off parts 3, 4, 2 and 1. We'll also have 5 and 6, we've got everything on this first page. Okay, so the first two parts put together are 3 and 4, and this is a <clears throat> easy to build model. So uh, technically, it needs no glue. So we have our peg here. And we have uh, several holes there. It's going in this one nearest to the to the arm where this will be, and this is meant to push into here. We'll see how well it goes in or not. Not too bad. So you got in pretty well. Yeah, there's no gap there. Figure out whether that's out of line or not. The coat's in line, so presuming that that bit does stick out. So yeah, that has gone in without any real issue. Can't really force it any further. Uh, okay. So then we have part one and two. So this is a small widget or whatever the hell it's meant to be <laughs> um, and this is the leg so it's actually hard to tell which way this is meant to go because we have this longer peg which sort of sticks out that way A quick look at it. So we have this little groove in here, and we have this little um, where is it? There is little groove in there. So I'm assuming that this groove goes over that groove. So it's a short end which goes in there. Um, it's pushed in pretty much as far as it'll go. And there we go. So the groove is on there. Alright, fair enough. So far so good. Uh, next up we have five and six. This is the arm and the sword. And uh, that goes. We have a little peg there. And with the receptacle in the bottom of the hand. So that bit is gonna go on to there. In theory. Oh, well, he's holding it upside down, isn't he? 
Of course he is. Because he's like leaning on it, so it must go the other way though. Yeah, so that will fit into the only not very well that one. Let's see what I guess in there. There's a big gap. Right, so for this one, and because there's plenty of places for it to join, I'm gonna cut this peg off and I'm gonna glue this on. Um, so I'll be back with one that. Okay, so we have our arm and sword combination there. Now all this gets put together. Allegedly. So we have our peg there, which is a long peg, which I assume this long peg fits into. Uh, and that'll be the only thing giving it any support, really. I am going to put some glue down here, just to, to secure that into place. But that long peg will go on there, and then we have this one here, which fits onto that. So let's walk at this one. See how that one goes on. Uh, yeah, that's a bit, it's not going to key. I'm going to cut this one down as well, stick that on. So we're back when I've done that. So we have our assembly there so far. Next up we have 8, which is the gun arm, 10, which is the end of the gun. Um, so we have a little double peg, large one in the middle, top one at the, small one at the top, and the corresponding one. So it tells you which way up it goes. That uh, does fit on there. Right on. It would come off if I really yanked it, but that's put on pretty well. Then we have. Uh, this little bit here, which is part of the trigger mechanism, which uh, fits into the hole there, where the hand is. Like that. that one fits in pretty well, actually. That doesn't need any extra sorting out. So that now fits onto the it's a very loose connection. I think you'd have to glue that one to be fair. And then we have the satchel, which is part seven, which fits onto the uh, the peg that's now stuck out of the back. So that goes on the that one goes on there a bit better. That's to actually a chest. So we'll put those two parts on. And then the last bit will be the body, which should fit onto these two pegs. Um, let's have a look. That's going to go straight in or not. Big. Yeah, so I'm going to trim those down and stick that on. So we're back when I've done that. Okay, so pretty much finished model, just put on his base. So with the arm, I didn't cut the peg down, I just had to glue it on to make it stay on properly. I had to def cut those two pegs behind his uh, body down really far to make it actually uh, fit into place. So nearly, they're nearly gone. And the peg on the back for that was actually perfect. It seems to slide into place perfectly. So kind of a mix of things with the pegs. Um, and then we just have the base. So it's just a case of uh, slotting in the foot there. And then the big skull that he stood on in the other one. In the other peg there. So hopefully that will go in without any real problems. There we go. And that's pretty solid connection. There we have Captain Black Powder. I'm calling him Captain Black Powder because it sounds cool. <laughs> that's a cool model. I do like that model. So next up is 
the other models, so these should be pretty easy to put together. The parrot, Screech, was it? Uh, yeah. Screech, Screech, can't remember them. Yeah, Screech. Shriek. 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 Made, made three parts, uh, 14, 13, and the base is 15. Uh, Mange, the monkey, is again three parts, 16, and 17, and 18. Uh, should be pretty easy to put together. And then we have the two. Cagey. It's like Cagey. That's Cagey. 2019 and 21. And Pegs. Pegs. 23, 22, and 24. So we'll get all those parts off and back in a moment. Okay, so Screech, part 14, part um, 13. Where's his head? There it is. Uh, we have a peg on top, so I'm not sure. Just go together, we shall see. There's a little bit of uh, stuff on there. There's a, these connections are very thin, so I'm going to be pushing from underneath his belly and from the top. Even then the tails are not... <laughs> yeah, that does not feel good to me. I'm taking that peg off. Hey, babe. Some more plastic, though. Good timing. <laughs> yep, there we go. So we'll attach that on to the. Again, gluing it means I don't have to apply that mega force. Is this the base for him? Uh, that one there. Yep. It's got like a jaw of some beast on it as well. And that one has two. Two attachments? No, just one. One where it uh, pushes in, which is the. Let me just do this off camera. Okay, so that was actually easier just to attach it to the base first because the wings fell off, so I was re glued them on. Uh, <laughs> so that's how I did it for you guys. I'd uh, push them into the base socket, cut the peg off, glued the wings on, got a nice connection done, and then um, look at the monkey. One let's follow the same theory if we push him into his base first. Where does the back light go? So it looks like it should go on like that. the way that is it's... yeah it's better it's a better alignment I think I think again because of these where his leg is it's hard to uh Quite down though. Let's keep pushing that. There we go. So yeah, a bit fiddly to get in though. And then we have the other side of this guy. Which is just two pegs. Yeah, they're a bit of a pain, I'm going to chop them down too. <laughs> okay, so there he is. Again, I had to cut those off. And the joint's right down the middle of his face, so you're going to see if it's out like, by even by a little bit. I also really don't like this, I <laughs> do not like this uh, dark plastic they've used. It's really hard to see things on it. So 
Next up we have, uh, is it, uh, which one is it? Uh, Not Pegs, the other yeah. one. Oh, um, let me get the cards. I keep forgetting his name. Keiji. <laughs> Keiji. So this is the guy with the well, grappling hook. Mm -hmm. So we have, this is kind of like a standard nobbler kind of attachment thing for the head. And then we have this leg attachment onto the base. So hopefully I don't need to cut these ones down because the head should just go straight up. Yeah, not an easy one. And then peg. He's just got the one attachment now. Foot on properly up. Doesn't want to go in. There we go. Into place. And then we have his head, and he's also got his hand as well. You can wield this effort. Um, fit this on. Oh, I'm just gonna flick off because oh, it's gonna annoy me. So I'm just gonna glue the arm and then we'll come back to the finished crew. And then we've finished the uh, crew. Uh, I do like the models a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I said I'm not keen on this plastic colour, it's just so dark you can't really see the detail. As well, yeah. I thought that when I was looking at it, yeah. it was very um, too dark a grey. I think, yeah. I mean, they do them all in different colours, so they're running out of colours, aren't they? So, um, in case you don't want to paint them, why you wouldn't want to paint them, or why you'd want them in such a dark colour that you can't even see really what they are that well? I don't know, mm. but um, I do like them, and um, I'm looking forward to actually painting them, giving them some actual Colour. detail, <laughs> depth. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So, pretty easy to stick together. I had to take off a lot of the pins. I'd recommend you doing the same when you're doing it as well. So, as far as a easy to build kit goes, pretty standard. Doesn't really work as intended, as far as I'm concerned. Um, take the pegs off. Uh, other than that, good kit. Looks nice. Um, I'm looking forward to painting it. Awesome sauce. Yeah. So, uh, please like and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you all again soon. But for now, take care. Bye for now.